Dr. Akiva Gamil Belk, Dean of Jewish Studies at Bene Noak Torah Institute, LLC. Welcome to Gematria in Genesis. This is our very first class, Baruch Hashem. Dear ones, we're in Bereshit, Bereshit, and that's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 6, verse 8. And our subject is entitled, Et Hashemayim, the heavens. Now, dear ones, we have just completed this week, uh, we, we celebrated uh, Shemini Eretz, the eighth day, and Simcha Torah, rejoicing in the Torah. And when we do that, one of the things that we do is to complete the entire Torah cycle. We complete the cycle by reading Mazot Habraka in Deuteronomy, the last parshat, and by reading Bereshit, Bereshit in Genesis, the first parshat. So we make that Torah cycle. Now, here in our discussion today, we'd also like to make that Torah cycle. And this is how we'd like to do that. This is the this is uh, Bereshit Bereshit is in the first book of Moses, and it's the first parshat. Mazot Habraka is in Deuteronomy, and it's the last parshat. So what we have here is a uniqueness. We have the letter Et. The letter Et has the Aleph, and the Aleph is the first letter of the Aleph Bet, the Hebrew alphabet, and the letter Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So, in the beginning, we have the Aleph and the Tav, and in the conclusion, we have the Aleph and the Tav. This is helping us to make our complete circle. So, when we began earlier this year, and we began with uh, Et HaShemayim, in the beginning, God created the heavens. And when we ended this week uh, with uh, the Zot Habraka, we ended with... Uh, some of the words would be these, Sifa uh, Hashem et Moshe. And Moses did everything from all to tell of what the Lord commanded him. So we want to understand the, uh, the word et is all inclusive. It, it includes everything, nothing left out, completely inclusive of everything from the letter Aleph to the letter Tav. So when we're talking about including everything from the letter Aleph to the letter Tav, we're talking about starting in the very beginning with the first word of Genesis and going all the way to the end, the last word in the book of Deuteronomy. So that's including everything. It's that inclusive. <clears throat> now, we know that the letter Aleph represents the Lord. And we know that the letter Tav also represents the Lord. And our sages teach that, that, uh, that, that while this is all-inclusive and this is the et, we also have emet. Now, emet means truth. And we know that the olive is in the beginning, the letter mem is in the center, and the letter tav is the concluding letter. And so this is emet, this is truth. And we recognize the olive and the tav, and the olive and the tav, okay? So what we're saying is, is the truth of the Torah is from the very first letter all the way to the very last letter, that complete circle, all of the Torah is true. Now, we have in the Gematria of 401, Aleph is 1 and the Tav is 400, 401, uh, this all-inclusiveness, this is God knows everything, there's nothing that can be hidden from God. So the Torah, it's, it's all there, it's there. We just, we don't understand it all. Uh, we don't understand all the mysteries and all the hidden things, but we do get some revelations. We receive some revelations, and hopefully today, God willing, we'll get one or two. So, uh, or more. We have the word ta. Ta is a tav and an alf. They're reversed, okay? The et is reversed. And here we have little, we have self. One single cell. It's not all inclusive. It's just one little tiny cell. It's just one. And so we recognize that uh, this is the gematria of uh, 401. One word represents everything, 
and it has it all from the top. And one word represents just one single thing, one tiny little single thing. And that's also part of the Torah. <laughs> so, uh, dear ones, we recognize that uh, Moses, um, uh, he placed his hands on Joshua, the son of Nun, and uh, he imparted him um, everything uh, at. And then we recognize that the Lord is saying that Moses, he did everything from all to top of what the Lord God had commanded him. So he, he was a servant who uh, faithfully, without question, served the Lord, which is what we want to do and what we need to do. And here... As we go into our lesson, we have Et HaShemayim. Et HaShemayim is so incredibly uh, important. And yet I find it so interesting because the translations in the English, the translators for the uh, Hebrew scriptures and for other uh, English translators, uh, they just completely leave the word Et out. They, they don't include it. And so, when it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, that's just making a statement. God created the heaven, God created the earth. But, when we include the et, we understand that God created every possible thing, whatever there could possibly be in the heavens. Everything. Nothing was excluded. So, let's think about a few of the things that God created in the heavens on the first day day, okay? God created the, the uh, book of life, Sefer Chaim. Every name that goes in Sefer Chaim was written in the book of life. That was all done. God created it. It's Et HaShemayim. Everything from all to top, completely inclusive in the HaShemayim. So that means all of our names were written in the book of life. That means that uh, if we have uh, that desire for that mansion in heaven, uh, that mansion in Gan Eden, or um, the, the place that each of us will go, God willing, after this life is over, our body goes to the grave, but our spirit goes to be with God in the Hashemayim in the heavens, okay? That mansion, or that igloo, or that teepee, or that log cabin, that place is already prepared for us. No one has to go and prepare it. Nothing has to be built. Nothing has to be constructed. Everything is complete at Hashemayim. That means that when we sin, that God knew that we were going to sin from the very beginning because at God is all knowledgeable. God is completely aware of everything. And so preparation was made for whenever we sin. And God has already forgiven that sin. So we don't have to cry out in anyone's name. We don't have to shed any blood. Okay, Blood doesn't remove the sin. We confess our sins with our mouth. And God forgives our sins. And, and we just simply tell God, hey, I made a mistake. We change our course. We back up. Try not to do the same thing again. Make a new plan. And be willing to pay restitution for what we've done wrong. And we're back on Derek HaTorah. Back on the path of HaTorah. So our redemption was all taken care of at HaShemayim. Our salvation was all taken care of at HaShemayim. Um, our name was written in the book at Hashemayim. Um, our place was prepared at Hashemayim. There's, there's nothing that is required other than us just to do our best to follow Derek HaTorah, the path of HaTorah, to do what God has commanded. And so this is the beauty of the gematria of Et. We recognize that from the very beginning of the Torah to the very conclusion of the Torah, that God has had a plan, and God's plan has always been there. And just because some individuals don't tell us about his plan by omitting words in the translations, doesn't mean God doesn't have a plan. So, dear ones, I, I would like you to be encouraged and to know that uh, we have a God who knows everything and thinks of everything and is prepared for everything. And nothing is left undone. Nothing is left to be done. It's all completed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining with me. Shalom.